everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So we're joined here with Candice and she is a psychic medium and she is going to have a look around her house and to see what is going on. So cool. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for and coming. Take it's... a look at what's what's creeping around in your house. <laughs> yeah. Because there has been a few things that have happened and I'm curious to see what you pick up on. And Yeah, I'm excited too. I, uh, I don't get a chance to do too many house calls, so mm -hmm. I appreciate you bringing me out here and seeing what you've got going on. So you want to take a look? Yeah, let's take a look. All right, so cool. Let's go, you guys. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about the house. And so what you said about the love affair seems to be something that we've kind of known about. So Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio used to live in this house. <laughs> okay, so that makes sense. And they were here, maybe it was 53 till, I don't know, oh. someone says, <laughs> it's like 53 to, we think it's 54, but it's it was 52 to 54. Something to like that. And um, I, like apparently, he, Joe, was still married at the time when he was seeing Marilyn. Right. And this was the place where they would come and hang out. And So that was like the energy of like the love affair, kind of like the hideaway space, mm -hmm. like having this as their space. Yeah, it was definitely that, but like a lot of passion. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of back and forth. I mean, maybe I know a little bit more than like the average Joe about that whole story. So it's kind of interesting to like be here and be experiencing that. The so average that's kind Joe. Of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 I like that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that makes sense. I mean, the other thing is, is just right when I, I said, right when I got here, there was a lot of me hearing things. And so for me, intuitively and psychically, I work with pitches. Mm -hmm. So I hear certain pitches so I know like what's around. And one of the th first things I had picked up was just a very high frequency coming in and getting coming into the house and kind of getting a feel for it and just being able to tell that there's a lot of movement in the house. And I don't mean in a sense of you guys, but... I do get the impression that there are people that walk back and forth, and I do get there, there's a lot of audio stuff. No, that was not a ghost. That was somebody walking. <laughs> Everybody's gonna go. <gasps> um, no, but but in a sense of like hearing people talking or hearing things, uh, you know, in the corner of your ear or things like that. Like it, to me, the house is very, 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 very audio based. So there's a lot of stuff going on with that. Um, the other thing is is that walking up to the space. You guys asked me a lot about this room and like the living room and stuff. I think there's so much movement going on because the road is right there that a lot of it kind of gets kind of drowned out. But the the, the spaces that seemed most kind of active to me were the front guest room and then also where the stairs are by the kitchen. Like there's a lot of weird energy. Like I get the impression there might have been a lot of fights there. I get the impression there was a lot of like somebody being really dramatic and throwing themselves around and kind of doing things like that and that's why I think there's that bent up and pent up energy of just being careful and not potentially falling down those stairs because mm -hmm. I keep seeing that psychically. That's what really kind of freaks me out. Wow. Yeah. So it's interesting you say that because I didn't even know it was maybe, I don't know, it was maybe when we first were moving in that I felt like I tripped. Yeah. Yeah, just be careful. Keep that area clear energetically. You know, you can go through there and you can burn some stuff. I mean, I know we talked a little bit about it, but depending on what you feel like you need to do, anything that you burn or if you use incense or if you want to use sprays or stuff to clear it, that's not going to get rid of everything because I don't think that the spirits in the house, they don't, they're not, you know, negative. They're not out to get you. Certainly the older masculine energy is a little pesky and I think that's what's going on is that he's more so kind of poking around and seeing who's in the house. But the other two energies that seem very feminine and like this relationship energy, it's it's not negative, it's positive. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a few experiences in the house and Maverick, he, a few, was it last week, Maverick? He got poked aggressively yeah. on his back. Um, yeah. And I've been poked before on my back and that was... That was when we were getting, it was Netflix, we wanted to come over to our house to check out to film for a Marlon film. It was the night before they were coming, I got tapped to wake up. Mm -hmm. And it was like, to go get ready, go get ready. And I just, I was like, I'm too tired. I was like, I'm just so going to sleep. But it was really weird. And and then I've had one incident, and that was in the master bedroom bathroom. And it was, it was a woman's voice, but you couldn't hear if it was 
high pitched voice or who the voice was, it was definitely a woman's voice, and then whispered into my ear to to do my under shadow of my liner to just do it straight across. And it was like, just do it straight. And I was like, oh, I freaked out. I dropped the thing and I ran out. And then I went back in and I was like, oh, I could try it. And it was weird because it was as if I could see where the liner would be. Mm -hmm. And I just drew it. Yeah. And I just to this one eye. And I didn't think anything of it. And then Maverick came downstairs and he said, oh, there's something different with your eye. And he pointed to this eye. Mm -hmm. And I just freaked out because I thought maybe I was just thinking something in my head I didn't No, know. there's definitely a lot of audio stuff in the space and, and something else I was saying too about kind of like the spirit attachment like the walk-in energy you know we talked a little bit about like this evolution of your style and whether that's your makeup how you wear your hair anything like that like you know I've met a lot of people <laughs> in doing psychic intuitive psychic medium paranormal stuff like you're not one of those super fans that's trying to become her mm -hmm. I think that what you're actually picking up on are mannerisms that are connected to her because there's still a presence in the house because she is attached to you or is attached to your demeanor how you come across or what you're doing um, I don't think it's that she's here 24 7 I don't think that she's pestering you but I think that there can be some kind of spiritual walk-in or attachment where you're taking on her mannerisms or taking on her styles or taking on things because you may very well be more open to that kind of lifestyle, how she lived, how she looked, you know, what she did. Mm -hmm. But also you and your partner being in this space and creating this space and being creative and like, this is your guy's safe space. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting what you're saying. Like, it's all weird. It's like, it's bizarre because like I was saying, like Maverick and I, we noticed that my style kind of changed a little bit when we first came in here. Um, I started wearing a lot more separates and my hair started to get better. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, not the colour of my gel, <laughs> but the, just how I would set my hair. It just... Yeah, definitely. It kind of changed. Yeah, I can see that and I can see where, how it's working with you. I mean, we even talked about the house and coming into the space and how you guys managed to kind of, within a matter of a couple of days, manifest finding a house that's connected mm -hmm. to her and then finding this space and how everything kind of came together. Yeah. I think you guys got the house primarily because you were going to preserve it and you were going to honor it in terms of how it was really supposed to look. I think the house has a mind of its own. Mm -hmm. So it's going to work with whomever's going to come in and is willing to pre preserve the space and preserve the history rather than come in and just kind of, you know, demolish everything. Yeah. I think that's part of, part of why they're interested in you. Yeah, because uh, as far as we were aware, the people that were going to buy it as well, there was like three people that were trying to buy it, mm -hmm. and one of them was wanting to change. Was wanting to change the inside and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, no, that wasn't going to fly with this house. <laughs> no, like, you can no. see how, how, much, how much happens energetically just with the few things that have been changed, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why I said to you, pay attention because there's something wonky about the electrical stuff here. I can feel it, I can see it, I can see that they're gonna have to lay all new electricity, it's gonna have to be in a different space, it's like you guys are gonna potentially have issues where you're using too much energy in the space, you're gonna have to make changes and you're gonna be moving things around. So when you, when you do bring somebody in to do the electrical, don't be surprised if you have some more activity, because I think, you think you might. Yeah, good activity or? I think you'll just have activity. It's not necessarily negative or positive. I mean, your house isn't, you know, your stereotypical haunted house, I think, that you would go into. Um, and when people think haunted houses, they think all kinds of like spooky mm -hmm. stuff, but they don't realize that, you know, it's just more active dur during certain periods of time. And, you know, we talked about how you're going through a period where you're just more sensitive and more aware and you're mm -hmm. coming into more of your awareness. And part of it might be part of that. Part of it is you're also bringing in a lot of vintage things into the space or you have older things that are in the space. And I think that there can be a lot of attachments. And when you get a lot of different objects that are coming into the space that are interacting with the spirits that are already here, well, you have like a little bit of a, a little bit of a party. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. everyone's like, what? <laughs> Oh, that's funny because like I've I remember my dad telling me he said there was always this one time a year in our old house mm -hmm. in Scotland that there would be like it just go crazy there'd be like lights going on and off mm -hmm. you'd hear footsteps more he said it was always one time a year and he said to me he said do you think there's maybe one time in this house that there's like an anniversary or something Does it's possible happen? I mean I think more so the energy that I picked up on when I walked into the house it was not just the love affair but there was a lot of parties <laughs> here. There was a lot of partying here. There was a lot of like drug, sex, rock and roll going on here. So, and, and that's why I asked you, like, what's the deal with that? Because I've got two separate timelines that are running that just don't connect. Uh -huh. So I think part of it is maybe 
you have a lot of residual energy from that being in this space and having a lot of partiers and having people who are using recreational drugs and doing stuff and you know maybe they were not as aware of what was going on in the house okay. so, um, do I think that there is an anniversary to the space I will tell you that there does seem to be a really strong connection to the month of May why I don't know but that I can tell is that there's something around May and now you guys moved in in February in the February yeah. <clears throat> And when would you think that you started kind of noticing that there was some stuff kind of going on here? When was it, Maverick? Maybe March? Mm, April. Okay. Okay. Because our, like our car got broken into at the end of February. It was like the three days we were in here, first three mm -hmm. days. It and then scary. it was scary. And then after that, I think we were more aware when we were woken up. So if we hear noises, mm -hmm. we were a bit more like cautious, like, oh, is that someone outside mm -hmm. again? Or and yeah so we weren't sure maybe that was when we started really noticing it more because we were more like aware of noises yeah i don't really get that there's a lot of people creeping around up here i mean no. I, I don't i mean yeah. i'm sure you've got people who are going to come looking for people in these houses but well, that i don't see i think that if anything the mm -hmm. break-in is not connected to the house there's no connection there's no bad luck there's nothing like that but I, but I do keep picking up significantly like May, like April, May, June, I mean, but May. So I don't know what you guys will find out historically. I don't know what you can find out in terms of when people lived here or what was going on, but there, there is a very strong connection to the springtime right before the summer in this house. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, definitely because we did have stuff happening in the very beginning that was a little, it was just like the monotonous kind of walking kind uh -huh. of thing, like the, the footsteps in the hallway that sounded almost like a little a little like jog through, but I would say that things started to get like a little bit more intense around that time. So that's when things started to pick up. I mean sounds about right when like the, the makeup thing happened. When that happened when was my dad here end of March? Yeah. Those yeah, I mean, part of it's also seasonal, you know, you have certain places in the country that are more active paranormally because of the actual environment and what's mm -hmm. going on in the environment or um, how, you know, the weather changes and the moisture and all kinds of things will, will really, some people will say, well, sure, you know, the moisture changes, the weather changes, your house moves, but California, we're pretty consistent with our weather. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot changes here, so no. <laughs> we, we got to find another reason for why things are happening, but I, I just feel like energetically... There's something tied to that month. So you guys will have to kind of dig around and, and see what kind of what kind of comes up for you guys. And I would be interested to see the original plans if you guys do ever kind of come up with that because I have some feelings there's some weird stuff going on underneath the house. Yeah. And I'm not saying critters, but I think that they're, you're going to find more things that are underneath the house or things that are tied to the actual house in itself. In the closet, there's that room that you can go underneath the house. But never I just close it because the door keeps opening. You should yeah. go in there. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. I'm, just I'm, out. I'm just getting ice cream. So. <laughs> no, no, no. I have to wait. I have to wait. But um, yeah, because that <laughs> in the closet, um, there's like a little kind of, I don't know, it's like a little kind of boxy kind of door and it was just made of wood and it just opened and it used to always open my closet door. So I just would close it and I put a box in front of it to keep it shut and then... No, there's energy underneath the house. There's there's stuff under the house. You'll find stuff. What? I don't know. You know, but there's definitely, I think you're going to find things, and I'm not talking about pool floats. <laughs> I think it's going to be more than that. Yeah, that's the thing, because you you mentioned um, you mentioned that you thought that we should look under the house because there might be something under there. She's like, I don't know that we should look. I feel like there's something there. Yeah, I do. I yeah. And you never brought that up to me. So. No, we didn't tell you. Yeah. just said that. Yeah, I, it's just sometimes you don't even think about it. You just totally forget, and I just remember that she said that. Mm -hmm. And then it's like the whole incinerator thing with the magazines and whatnot. So it's all maybe around under. Yeah, there, there's you know. definitely, and I don't think it's like spooky stuff, but there, there's energy. That's why I said what's above and what's below, because there, there's something that's brewing. There's something else that's down there. Yeah. So I would be interested to see what it is. You might find documents. You might find you know, all kinds yeah. of boxes and things, but it, it, I think it's connected to an older period of time. Hmm. That's true, we should go look. We should go look. I'll make sure I put on some, like, crappy clothes, because I don't want to ruin these. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin these. I don't want to ruin these. <laughs> but yeah, oh. so I think that's it, right? Cool. Yeah. Awesome.